Gamma was an absolute blast. I got to play a lot of games, see a lot of people, see a bunch of upcoming games, see publishers I know, hang out with content creators that I value and respect, from Devin Norris, from Kidsplaining, from Thinker Themer, to Professor Meg, to Board Game Coffee, so many. It was too short. I will be back. I had a lot of fun. Hey, I'm Alex Ratcliffe from Board Game Co. And what follows is my, I guess, vlog from Gamma. Uh, Gamma is going to be a bit of a B2B, a business to business convention, more focused on retailers, distributors, publishers, and this year a heavy focus on media as well. A whole bunch of channels, Instagram, YouTube, wherever, uh, coming down to go ahead and check out everything that's going on. And I decided to vlog it. So you're going to see all of that with the shaky camera, the bad background noise. If you find it at all entertaining, let me know and I will see what I can do with picking up slightly better equipment for the next time I do one of these. I kind of had fun doing various segments, although there are big gaps as a good rule of thumb. The more fun I was having, having the less I filmed because if I was having fun, I forgot, fortunately, to keep pulling out my camera and interrupting it. So we'll go ahead and go through this. This is a bit of a, a, bit of a journey, a bit of a mess. I hope you have fun. Hey, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. and I don't know if this video is actually going to be a video. I, I just don't know yet. You see, I'm on the way to Gamma. Gamma is going to be uh, the Game Manufacturer Association, something or other. It's a convention for for like retailers and publishers and all this stuff. And I've never really done one of these videos before, but I figured, why not? Let's go ahead and sit down, stare at the camera, uh, document my travels. And I'm driving now, but I'm basically, I'm at the airport. I'm just waiting to get into the parking lot. And then from there, flying and all those basic things. But I don't know if this is going to be a video because I don't yet know, first of all, whether I'll do more of these little segments. I can't do a 30 second long video, so it has to be a whole bunch of, you know, what happened, uh, you know, being at the airport, being at Gamma, showing you this, showing you that. My goal is to make this a video because I always enjoy watching these when other people do them. So this is part one. Uh, we're going to dive straight into it. We're going to continue. I'm going to document my, my journey, hopefully, if I remember, and uh, we'll see you soon. So I just packed my car and I'm walking to the airport. It's a bit nippy out here. Nippy's a fun little word for cold and all that. I don't know why I explained that to you, but basically it's chilly. It's chilly. I'm heading to Reno. The weather should be a little bit nicer there, although likely not amazing either. So we'll see. So I just spent uh, 15 minutes in a line that was only necessary if I was checking a bag and I'm not checking any bags. I don't fly often. It shows. I made it through security, no real issues, past them thinking that my wife's coffee bars are something they have to pull out and inspect, which, I mean, makes sense, I'd want those too. But now I'm sitting down for the next two hours, and uh, my choices are either Almanac, The Dragon Road, as far as rule books, or alternatively, Sanctum. I have a lot more, don't get me wrong, this is what I bring with me when I travel, but I'm going to start with one of those two. I don't actually know. Sanctum I've been wanting to play for a long time and I've never finished the rule book. I keep starting it and haven't finished it. There's a great uh, review write up over on Board Game Geek, which is part of why I am continuously intrigued by this game. I'll link to it down below if I remember. And then there's Almanac the Dragon Road, which I, I, I've been hearing good things about. And my recent video with a Thinker Themer, that I'll try to link to that below as well. They had nothing but good things to say and um, I'm intrigued. I want to I wanna play these. I also have like 14 more rule books in here, plus like three rule books on my laptop because they're prototype rule books and not fully finished and printed, but a whole bunch of stuff to keep me busy for the next two hours. I also might pull out my phone that I'm filming this on right now and play Through the Ages Road to Civilization. That's the one. Through the, through the Ages, whatever it is. But we'll see. We'll go from there. That was a flash of uh, sunlight. Basically no, sun setting or something in the plane. I don't want to disturb anyone, so I just turned it on to capture it but then moved on uh, there's there we go I just got off a minute ago uh, landed in Phoenix Arizona and time to sit around the airport for two hours and then make my way over to Reno finally had a second to decompress uh, sit down go to the bathroom do all that it was a four hour long first leg of the flight I managed to watch an episode of Cowboy Bebop Netflix first episode just giving it a shot uh, I sat down and read uh, a few hundred pages of a Jack Reacher book and then 
Like promised, I did read two rule books. Now I read through Almanac the Dragon Road first. Looks very fun from Scott Alms. I, I knew that it had like a worker placement where every page was different. What I didn't realize is I kind of was under the impression that it was like every game you played a different one and you don't. You go through, I mean you, you do too, but you go through a sequence basically. You go through like six in a row, whatever it is, six different missions, one at a time, each one carrying on from where the last one left off. <laughs> very excited to dive into this one, but that was one rule book down. But then from there, we have Sanctum. Sanctum was my second one, finished this one. Again, very excited to see this one. I've heard lots of mixed things, so I don't know exactly how it'll play out, but I'm optimistic. It looks fun, looks like you have powers and abilities, all that kind of stuff. And then the question is the final boss fight, how it plays out. But all in all, it's been pretty successful so far, which means it's time to sit down, decompress, and grab another rule book. Okay, so I just went ahead and got myself, well, some cold brew, because because you got to do what you got to do. Now it is ridiculously expensive, but that is uh, that's airport life for you. So we're gonna go ahead and put that down. We're gonna grab some nuts. I got some nuts for my uh, healthy snacking to keep me prepped. Flight's boarding in roughly an hour, it seems, to Kitigatorino, and we're gonna dive into here. Here's what we're gonna dive into. Okay, we're gonna dive into the next two rule books, which are we have pandemic fall of rome okay you'll be diving into this one it's one of the few pandemic variants i haven't tried from the basic ones not from but once you have dice games and other stuff like that and then also voyages i, I brought a print and play game with me the voyages this was a four dollar print and play over on kickstarter that i'm finally diving into i got like the maps printed out and everything it looks fun don't know anything about it it's the only game i actually brought with me i figured they'd have games there and i want to save my luggage space so we're gonna get started on those Next time you hear from me, we'll possibly be on the plane as we're boarding or with an update on what I know about those two games now. Sorry, too soon not to update you on this. Voyages is a single sheet per player game with multiple standalone maps representing different legs, blah 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 blah. To play the game, just print out one game sheet per player and three standard six sided dice and something to write with. I didn't bring dice. I mean, I'm sure we'll find dice, but I guess I have no games with me, so, so we'll come back to this. Starting to board my next flight, so uh, I'll be loading that in a second. It's not loading anything, just walking onto a plane, but I did finish both my rules as uh, committed. Basically, we have this Voyages game over here. Uh, I read the rules for the first map, but basically you're drawing lines, connecting goods, uh, trying to gather a bunch of things, ultimately complete three legendary stars, and then score up your points through goods and exploring and defeating stuff and all those fun things. Typical roll and write goodness. There's another map over here. I only read the rules for the first map because let's start with one and go from there. And then secondly, we also have Pandemic Fall of Rome. So I finished the rules for this one as well. Looks like your typical Pandemic variant. The standard stuff, nothing really surprising. The aspect I think I like the most, in theory, without having played it is the concept of the line the pathway that the barbarians are effectively evading from circles that you have to draw access points so they kind of need an actual direct line of, of basically attack as opposed to the complete random spread of a pandemic so kind of intrigued by that happy to dive into it looks like my flight is still loading over there we got the line slowly loading up uh, i'll be heading on to that and then we'll see so I just landed. Uh, these are apparently slot machines or some sort of gambling in here. I guess that's what happens when you land in Nevada. But got the plane. It's 1 a.m. At least my time it's 1 a.m. In Nevada and Reno it's like 10 something whatever. But I'm three hours ahead mentally and I'm ready for bed. Uh, did get to read Animal Kingdoms. So one more rule book down. That's five today plus another 200 pages of Jack Reacher and I could really use a good nap. So look who I ran into. <laughs> oh, it's, oh, it's I ran into uh, this guy over here. Hey, hey, hey. Well, it may no. or may not be a vlog. I was pretty clear when I started oh, this that oh. it depends how much and how interesting it is and whether well, the audio is halfway well, decent. If so. it's interesting, if you do it based on the interesting, why are you doing it with me? You're right, I'll just cut this part. <laughs> just cut this part. All right, it's 3 a.m. my time. Again, not, not here, but my body's on 3 a.m. time right now. So I'm gonna call it night right now, but uh, first let's go ahead and show you just a little bit of the view. Maybe we'll show you more tomorrow when you can actually see something, but it's it's nice. It's nice being up here, and I'm very excited for tomorrow and all the games and the things, but I need to crash. I really need to crash. Okay, I've had four hours of sleep, but I have stuff to do. I will be, I need a coffee. I need a coffee, I'll be with you in a minute. I'm um, just getting some stuff done, finish my coffee, much, much, much better. I'm running on four hours of sleep, don't worry, I'm fine. I can get away with doing stuff like this once a week, I just can't do it like three nights in a row. So it is important that I either go to sleep early tonight or wake up or 
late. One of the two has to happen tomorrow if I don't want my body to start going through the process of getting sick, which will happen if I push myself too far too fast. But past that, I uh, woke up at, well, I woke up at 7 o'clock my time, which is 4 o'clock here. Yeah, 4 o'clock. I went to sleep at 3 a.m. and woke up at 7 o'clock because I need to get stuff done. I need to get things done, whatever it is. And so, yeah, I mean, right now it's it's 10 o'clock. I've been working for the past three hours now, getting all my stuff done for the day. This is part of the downside of traveling and doing all these things while I still have a day job and other responsibilities. So I need to get things done. Uh, that stuff happens in the evenings and the mornings. And the evenings, people are awake and want to do stuff. In the mornings, I, I, I have myself and I can get things done. So... So that's what happens when I travel right now. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the view. Uh, maybe I'll go ahead and just switch it to the front camera and we'll go from there. So this is what I mean over here if you go ahead and take a look. This is, I'm on the 10th floor up here. I mean, it's a decent view. Like I said, this is Reno, Nevada. I'm in the Pepper Mill. That's where this convention is being held. Uh, this is not the nicest view, honestly. I mean, I mean, I like the height aspect and seeing the distance. But like, oh, look, a truck, a truck, a truck. I mean, it's not that cool. It's just a truck. My kids want to have gone crazy for it, though. Uh, but yeah, lots of ceilings. Ceilings, if you want air conditioning units, we got all of that over here. Uh, then we got, you know, the hills. Oh, those are nice. Those hills are nice. That would be cool to go there. And just fun stuff. But yeah. Heading downstairs now, trying to basically find something to eat. Uh, the whole problem with while well, keeping kosher is that I have multiple dietary restrictions, and that means i got to go to Walmart and find some uh, kosher food or something to keep me nourished because I had coffee that was easy but the rest is gonna be a little harder now this is a much much nicer view whole lot more going on here so I'm in the car here with Devin and uh, kids planning actually kids planning over there Hello. Hey. Hey. yeah he's driving he's driving I don't want to mess with things but but yeah we went to Walmart grabbed some food so I can get all the stuff I'm eating my cream cheese on a croissant right now if you think that's ghetto you're not wrong but it is delicious it's a some flavored cream cheese. It's not the plain stuff. That'd You've be crazy. You've been very happy with it. I've been very happy with it because I've been eating. Happy. I've been surviving in cashews uh, and Reese's peanut butter cups and coffee, of course, uh, so far. This is my first real food. I just food. want you to know. Every time you say cashews, I think you are audibly saying the word sneeze, like cashew. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This reason I'm not friends with Devin. Yeah. I, I, I turned the phone we back were on. to say this side of the car because <laughs> we got board game coffee here. Hey. Say hi. How's it going? I, uh, just so you know, I got a private elevator to get to the fourth floor. Seriously? That's right. That's that, really nice. I'm gonna, put, I'm gonna put a sign on it that says board game coffee private elevator. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. I'm gonna cover up the FFEE. -E. <laughs> and look at that. Here is Vince from Lucky Duck, uh, as well as the rest of the Lucky Duck crew who did not make it into this picture. So I'm happy I filled up on those croissants because otherwise I'd be very, very jealous of the, the lunch that I can't eat, unfortunately. I do have a Diet Pepsi. That does help. It's not a Dr. Pepper, but I'll take it. But this is the this is the ballroom. This is the lunch and learn. Or I think it's actually just lunch and greet. It might just be a meet and greet. But I'm hanging out, talking to people, doing that fun thing. Uh, we're going to be heading up shortly to the media room in around another hour or so. I don't know. I looked at my watch that I don't have. It's not a watch. It's a vaccine badge to show that I'm vaccinated, but uh, in about an hour or so on my fictional watch, uh, we'll be heading upstairs and checking out the first early access uh, press room and going from there, and we'll see. So right about over here, I ran into Professor Meg. You've probably seen me over with her, uh, the Quackle channel, filming Tidal Blades. We've, we've hung up before, we've talked before, but I ran into her here. I don't have any real footage of her throughout this entire video, which is a shame, but she does sort of make another appearance later. I'm heading down to a media room, basically. There's a media event from 2 to 6 where we can look at new games, fun stuff. I'm sure I'll have lots of videos of that. Uh, I am back to cheese, cream cheese on a croissant. Don't make fun of me. This stuff is delicious. You will be seeing cream cheese on croissants throughout the rest of this video, I guarantee you. Uh, past that, uh, I'm going to be meeting up with Board Game Coffee in a second, and we'll see you in a sec. It's camera reception. It's camera, We're both videoing reception. each other over here. There you go. Yeah, look over here. Ah, oh, this is, oh, like, this is... This is it's so, so much fun. So messed up. Crazy. So messed up. Okay, uh, we're gonna go. Oh, you know what you should. You know what, you, what I didn't know. What I should. Cool. What, yeah. What's that? Go ahead. Show me. Show me. Let's let's find out. Cause right now we're just heading down that hall. I want to show you. That's See right. See these posters? Yep. They're touch screen. Oh, oh no. They are. They are. No, they're not. Oh, bam. Oh, that's, that's pretty screen. cool. So you can do things. That's pretty cool. 
Yeah, so anyways, we're about to head to the yeah. media first room. I just jabbed him in the leg. We have these giant, like, safari-themed rooms. We're oh, doing something. Hey, this is where our thing is tomorrow. I was going to say, we're doing something in there. Yeah. I don't know the details of it, but something's happening in there. There's an, there's an elephant on the door. There's an elephant on the door. I was told there are no live elephants in the room, though, so we'll see. But yeah, I mean, this but is basically... monkeys. Monkeys? Oh, live monkeys. I'm down for live monkeys. Uh, but yeah, we'll see. We're going to head to the room, and I will show you cool stuff, because after all, that's the entire reason for this video, right? Showing you cool stuff. Anything else is kind of secondary, if you think about it. Okay, so this is the media room where they started to show us all the various games on display. Some things that are already out and available, some things not so much. We have the Lost Ones from Greenbrier Games. Think Seventh Continent Light and what it's doing. We have Illiterati over here, which I've already finished uh, talking about. Well, finished. Well, I already talked about on the channel. Uh, Kickstarter's doing well. Might have finished by now. We have Beyond Humanity Astro Miners. This is one which I don't really know much about, past the fact that it looks really cool on the table. We have Sherlock from Lucky Duck uh, Games. Uh, Sherlock's going to be a bit of a kind of Chronicles of Crime, but also totally not Chronicles of Crime. Involves connecting clues in a variety of ways. We have Bardsung here from Steamforge Games. They kind of just have this set up with no one actually around, but the miniatures look cool. I am eagerly awaiting my copy to show up so I can sit down, table it, play the game. We have Boop from Smirk and Dagger. Boop is going to be a bit of an abstract game of cats bouncing onto a bed and displacing other cats as they slowly grow up from kittens to cats. Looks adorable. I'm curious what the final production copy looks like. And that's a bit of a wrap for the day one games that they had in the media room. We'll be back with a few more in a minute. But right about now, we went and headed down to the Glass Die where we spent a decent chunk of our time in Gamma playing games with one another. So, we're at the Glass Die now, it's a little bit of a, you know, pub and board game cafe. Mm -hmm. We're sitting down to play mm -hmm. That Time You Killed Me, which Devin... Oh, hey, board game hey. coffee's there again, so hey. the guy won't leave me alone. No, that's uh, the guy won't leave me alone. We're playing The Time You Killed Me, which is a game We actively dinosaurs. walked here, and Mark oh. followed us I did. the whole way. I did. And he was behind us going, like, why is this taking so long? <laughs> why didn't we draw? <laughs> I, was in the, I was in the bushes, <laughs> jumping back and forth. Sneaking up on them. Yeah, so we're gonna sit down and, and play this game. Devin's gonna teach us. He's gonna perform the sacrifice of teaching us the game and not playing because it's two player only. I've been wanting to play this for a while. I've heard good things about it. It's a little bit of a time travel element or something along those lines. I don't know exactly. We'll figure it out. Uh, from there, we'll probably try to play Streets or 14 million other games because there's, uh, there's so many stuff I want to play. This place looks great. There's a lot of stuff here. This place looks awesome. I'm gonna probably come here and do um, You don't live here, Devin. Every day this week. Oh, that makes more sense. I'll come here every day too. Even if I don't live here. I'm just coming. Oh, it's gonna be an expensive flight. It's gonna be like eight hours <laughs> to get here every time. So right about here, Professor Meg shows up at the glass die as well. Uh, we sit down to play some games, and she decides to uh, film me teaching Skull for some reason. It's a bit of a mess, but it kind of works. Everything All right, guys, this is going to be Alex explaining Skull. I almost said Skull can't be. Whenever you're ready. You good. Cool. So, Skull is a game which you're trying to win twice. Basically, you want to flip your coaster twice. The first time you flip your coaster, the first time you win a round, you're going to flip your coaster. The second time you flip your coaster, you're going to win, okay? So you want to do that twice. The way you win in Skull is by not being wrong, basically. You want to make a bet that you can actually accomplish. So, what you'll do over there, this is really irritating, what is happening here? What you're gonna do is one at a time, you're gonna grab a coaster and you're gonna put it down in front of you. Then you're gonna grab a coaster and put it down in front of you. I'm gonna go round and around until a player wants to bid. When a player wants to bid, they're gonna say, you know what? I'm bidding, I'm, I'm putting down another coaster. What about you? Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. All right. I'm gonna bid three. All right. I'm gonna bid three. Now when I say I'm bidding three, what I'm really saying is I think I can reveal three coasters without revealing a skull. You see, every player has four coasters. Three of them have flowers and one of them has a skull. So the problem is you have to reveal your own coasters first. Okay, so if you put down a skull to mess with other people and if you win the bid, then you're gonna have a problem on your hands. So when I sit there, <laughs> when I sit there, and I bid three, he can bid higher. Do you want to bid four? Or do you want to go five, seven? What do you want to do? Go seven. Seven. There's yes. no seven. seven. There's no seven. There's only, there's only here. You said I could bid okay. seven. We got two coasters each. But go ahead. Two coasters each. You two. tell me. So what, what am I bidding? Do you want to, are you bidding or? Yeah, I'm bidding. What are you bidding? How much? Five. Five, okay, great. So go ahead. I'm not gonna outbid you. So go ahead, start flipping your coasters. So you know, I never even looked at these. That's a pain, that's a problem. Oh, you're safe, it's a flower. Go ahead, reveal yours. Oh, it's a skull you lost. What? Now, had he not, had he not revealed the flower, he would have started moving to our coasters in any order that he wants. If he gets to his number, he wins and he flips this over. If he reveals a skull as he did, he shuffles up his coasters. I'm sure I can shuffle then, myself. And then one is randomly removed, which may even be his skull, and we don't know. 
His skull may no longer be in the game, we don't know. One You're going to keep playing until eventually either all players are eliminated, which is less common, or until one player has successfully made a bid that they can actually cash in on and flip their poster twice. And that's skull. Alright guys, that is skull. Let's see how Excellent. I'm back. Six hours have gone by. I played a lot of games. I'm very tired. That's that's really it. I'm tired. It's uh, back to being two o'clock in the morning, my time again. I'm still I still haven't really left Cleveland time. Uh, no matter what I do here, I'm kind of just I figure I'm only here for a few days, so I'm not gonna bother reacclimating towards this time, towards Reno time. So I'm kind of three hours in the future, which means I'm getting up at the equivalent of four o'clock in the morning here. Which is seven o'clock my time, but I'm also I'm also a little tired and sleepy right now. I'm gonna go ahead and clear out a few emails, get a few things done, then I'm gonna turn in for the night, and we'll be back again tomorrow with more stuff. Thanks for uh, going through this. I have a lot of stuff. I have a lot of stuff. I'm gonna probably somewhere in the middle here, probably through a clip of all the games I saw in one of the demo rooms today, the press demo rooms. I'll probably go ahead and check out some more tomorrow. Those will likely be a part of this blog, or possibly a full separate one. I don't, I haven't figured out entirely. It depends on how many cool games I see. But, but I'm tired, so so I'm heading into day two. I'm only here for two days, and then I'm 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 off back home, and, and more videos, more games, more fun. But I'm gonna turn for the night. Have a good night. All right, I'm up. It's 5 a.m. I mean 5 a.m. Reno time. My body's still adapting. It's still adjusting. I'm working on five hours of sleep. So this is an improvement from last night, but. I went to grab a coffee, and I grabbed this. This is dark magic, okay? Dark magic, except for one small thing. It's decaf. What kind of monster names dark magic? It's decaf. Don't call it dark magic. Call it something less impressive. I mean, sure, it's got an orange line. Maybe that always means decaf. I don't know. I'm not a curry person. I like having my coffee at home. I'm just doing the best I can with where I'm at. And it's decaf. The good news is they do have other coffee. So I'm going to have coffee, uh, sit down, get some work done, and then we're going to start heading around. Uh, I got probably two hours before anyone's up or about. <sighs> Roblox. I did get I did get Welcome to the Moon. Uh, I don't know if you can see it over there. I grabbed Welcome to the Moon. That's over there. I uh, picked it up from a little game store. It's more expensive than getting online, which does violate my usual uh, rules. Not rules, but like I, I buy things where they're cheap. But... I did spend six hours in that game store playing board games, and I also appreciate the game store existing for that. So, I also like to, uh, to just to show appreciation for for the fact that I was there for for six hours playing board games. So, so and I and I want Welcome to the Moon. So it works out in the end. So it's three hours later, uh, roughly three hours later. Yeah, but yeah, it's three hours later. I, I've been getting things done for three hours, uh, dealing with the emails, all the usual stuff. Again, it's the downside of still having jobs and things that I have to take care of, no matter what happens when I travel. But hey. It, it's just the price of having a good time. But in any case, uh, I'm done with all that. I'm going to start getting ready for heading downstairs, doing all the stuff. It's starting to get all daylighty outside, and that means I can actually interact with people who are starting to wake up soon, maybe. But first, it's going to be Breakfast of Champions, and Breakfast of Champions means crave. This video is sponsored by Kellex. More than them. More. More. Jeez. This video is sponsored by Kellex. More than. I can't say it. This video is sponsored by Kellex. More but them at the end of the sketch. But. Uh, Kellogg's and Crave, by the way. If you missed it, I do have another channel, uh, Quack and Co. You can check that out if you want. It's been going for like seven months, but we kind of keep it a mostly secret and occasionally talk about it here and there briefly, but only in small ways, like right here and now. But we talk about Crave in this past week, where uh, Quack and I sit down and talk about Captain Crunch, Crave, breakfast cereals, and our best and worst games played uh, that month. So I'm basically going down to the hall to see if anyone's up yet. It's still early for me, so. I'll probably just grab a coffee and sit down and read the rule book to Welcome to the Moon. I will say, like wandering through these like just panels and panels of slot machines, and look at this, the slot machine after slot machine after slot machine. I don't know, I, it could just be I have no real interest in gambling of any kind, but it just strikes me as so, uh, like listen, I get going to sit down playing Texas Hold'em or something like that, but just rows after rows of slot machines. This feels a little depressing, personally speaking. Never mind, I just got a $7 latte. I'm heading back to go find those slot machines. 
This is Hero County from J. Cormier. This is a bit of an abstract, asymmetric game with a whole bunch of abilities, powers, factions, a lot of interesting things happening here. We have Cult of the Deep, a bit of a hidden role kind of game of a bunch of cultists trying to kill one another or really achieve their own individual goals. We have Distilled. This is going to be a game that I also covered in the channel. They had it set up in the media room, got a chance to see in person and meet the designer in person. We have Hippocrates from, from Game Brewer. This is going to be a bit of a medical, I think, dice hospital on steroids as you try to connect medic and the doctors and medicines and patients and all those things. We have Batman set up, a whole bunch of miniatures, a lot of board space. I, I don't have a good feel on how this game plays. I know it's solo only. I know uh, Daryl Andrews is involved, but a, a whole bunch of things, but I'd love to actually sit down and play it at some point. We have Skull Canyon Ski Fest from Pandasaurus Games, a bit of a ticket to ride combined with parks and what it's doing as you connect various trails and slowly move your way around, also trying to all connect the various sco slopes as you go along. We have Escape from Stalingrad Z, which is a game with miniatures and or standees, focusing on a Gloomhaven style of flipping the pages to to kind of access whatever mission you want, focusing on a bit of a dungeon crawl combined with zombies, World War II, and accessibility, all kind of mixed together in one. We had Comfort Creatures from Kids Table Board Games set up over here. This is one that I actually had my copy arrive while I was at the convention. Land vs. Sea from Good Games Publishing. This is one I've already had a chance to play myself and cover, but in case you want to see it here. And then Ark Nova, just kind of sitting there baiting me. I really need to play that game. Quacklope just got a copy in. I'm hoping to sit down and play it with him. We shall see. Goryo was a bit of an interesting one, focusing on a bit of hidden movement, but meant to be kind of, I guess, family-friendly or kid-friendly, kid-accessible. Managed to play around or two, looked intriguing, kind of need to dive in fully to get a full feel for how the game plays. And that's going to be a bit of a wrap on the Day 2 games. Again, didn't really cover everything, but gotten a lot of small footage of a variety of games and got to touch and feel and see a whole bunch of fun little things. But from here, we head back to the Glass Die again for Day 2, where, I mean, a whole bunch of things happened. Actually, in a second, you'll see me play Playing games with. Okay, so I finally got to sit down and play a game. This was Luna. We got Luna from Stefan Feld over here, and if you notice, oh, 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 who's? Hey! Hello. Hey. Hello. I don't know about you, but when I watch these videos from like when I watched your, you guys just did a Dice Tower West, West thing, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah my yeah. favorite part is seeing surprise people in the videos. <laughs> surprise. So, surprise. Surprise people. This is one of those things. Yeah. Yes. If you if you don't know, uh, I may have talked about them already before, but if you don't know, that's Amy and Maggie from Think Your Themer. I'll link to their channel. Uh, like I said, we just played Luna. Stefan Feld. We Bell. did play Luna. Yes. Uh, first impressions? First impressions is amazing that you can learn a game in 15 minutes. Yes, you <laughs> learned it quite literally in 15 minutes. So That's like, amazing. Oh, what have you got with you? What have you brought? Yes. Oh, okay, to, give me 15. to be fair, once we're talking about other people, uh, big thanks to Paul Grogan because, I mean, I started the rule book, but I needed some visual aspects, and he, I mean, him on two times speed plus me reading the rule book at the same time, it worked. Yeah. It did. Um, Amazing, they, yeah. It took you a while to get our head around the game. Well, it took me a while to get my head around the game. So There's yeah. a lot of like collecting some things before you can take those actions. Yeah. But it's really interesting, very Steffenfeld like, very layered in the puzzle. Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah you, you do have that thing of like you have the multiple, uh, those like three or four steps ahead for every single yeah. thing that you yeah. want to do. It's like, okay, there's like three or four layers of movements and things that I need to plan for before you can do that thing. Um, and it was really interesting having these moving pieces because that, that gave another, so you have these little characters that will um, rotate around the different um, islands. And so having to think for the like plan for your next round where you want the people to be left and placed, like I actually, yeah, I quite enjoy that. I clearly didn't do that well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I definitely, it was very interesting because like my first move in the game was like, just giving up two novices for a single token, which felt very anticlimactic. Mm -hmm. But as the game progresses, you definitely get to get a lot done. But yeah, yeah. that was that was it. Uh, yeah. Amy, Maggie, we may or may not see you in the rest of this video. Yeah, thanks yeah. for teaching. Thank you for the teach. Yeah. So hanging out with Amy and Maggie, playing Luna from Stefan Feld was an absolute blast. And right about here, we headed back to the Glass Die again. I hooked up with uh, Devin and Board Game Coffee again. We headed over to the Glass Die, sat down to play a bunch of games. Uh, Thinker Themer, Amy and Maggie showed up again, just unprompted together. We ended up happening to meet up again. We played a bunch of games. We played Raj of the Ganjas. We played French Toast. Uh, yesterday, I may or may not have been on the footage, I don't remember, but we played That Time You Killed Me from Peter Hayward. And we, we happened to find ourselves sitting next to Peter Hayward. Hayward and, and Allison Chase and we sat down and played his other game, French Toast. So we played one game without him yesterday, we played French Toast with him today, we played Decrypto, we played uh, for So Clover, we played a bunch of games all having a just an absolute ton of fun. Like I said earlier, 
the more fun I was having, the less my camera actually got pulled out to, to record it, which is a shame because on the one hand, we had a lot of fun. On the other hand, I would have loved to have a little bit more footage of those those memories. The, some people I met for the first time, some people I'm meeting for the first time in person. Just having a whole lot of fun for the next like six hours or four hours or whatever it was uh, at, at the glass die. Okay, so I've been pretty bad about cataloging the rest of this day because honestly, just because I've been having fun. I've been talking, playing, interacting. That's gonna be a loud engine noise in the background. A little too loud, honestly, but. Yeah, uh, right now I'm all packed up. I'm heading to the airport. Uh, in case you're like, wait a second, uh, there's so much stuff in Gamma that you haven't shown us yet. The answer is, you're right. I'm heading home early. I was only here for two days, unfortunately, because uh, Thursday is the holiday of Purim, which is effectively, the way I put it simplistically, is it's Jewish Halloween. Uh, we dress up, we give food and stuff to our friends, we have meals and all those things, and ultimately, my kids are dressing up. And they're gonna want me there. And I wanna be there with them because there's some things you can miss, but like, when your kids are dressing up, you don't want to miss that. Or at least I don't want to miss that. So I'm here for half a trip. A little bit uh, bittersweet because it's fun. I'm going to miss people here. But also priorities. Priorities are important. So, yeah, we'll see. But I'm going to I'm gonna head to the, this is, not, this is not the end of the vlog or whatever you want to call it. Because I still have the airport and the flight and the this and the that. I got 12 hours on a plane, which means plenty of time to think about this because it's less fun than sitting down playing board games. So, making my way down. Got another hour to go before my flight takes off or starts boarding. Ooh, got these little mountain goats down here. Look at that, look at that. This is just uh, in the airport. But yeah, slowly make my way. Got through TSA pre-check or whatever you wanna call it. Did the thing, slowly make my way to a boarding station. And then from there, in an hour, we're taking off. So um, I just landed, okay, so I got off my plane, doing my thing, and now I am briefly logging in to get a few things done work-wise before I head back to, well, work. Uh, this is, again, the joys of, of traveling and all that. Gamma was fantastic. Uh, the only two days I was there, at least, there was a lot of fun. There's probably a lot of background noise right now, so I'll pick this up in a second, but uh, I got off the plane, did all that stuff, and I'll have to figure out how to edit and put this all together so it's some sort of cohesive storyline without the massive gaps that exist when I, well, forgot to record for the whole day. Gamma was an absolute blast. I got to play a lot of games, see a lot of people, see a bunch of upcoming games, see publishers I know, hang out with content creators that I value and respect, from Devin Norris, from Kidsplaining, from Thinker Themer to Professor Meg, to Board Game Coffee, so many. It was too short. I will be back. I had a lot of fun.